All right, so um, I should turn the projector on so you can see what I see. Uh, how'd it go doing problems? You didn't do any? Nobody did any. All right. Well, I'm going to keep going. So you're going to want to do some this weekend. Okay? So uh, we talked about method of joints. And that's what the homework was over. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk, before we jump into, we're going to talk about the method of sections. The method of what? Sections. We don't have a screen still, huh? I think it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. So we're going to be talking about the method of sections today, but in order to do that, uh, we need to be able to identify zero force members first. Okay? So in order to identify what a zero force member is, I want us to do a problem. So we've got this kind of like box truss thing going on, okay? And I'm going to tell you that there's a load applied horizontally here of 1 million pounds. Let's just keep it interesting, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and label this guy. A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to say, let's find loads in all members. Okay, everybody kind of understand the problem here? Yeah? All right. What's the first thing we need to do in the method of joints? Okay, so close, pick a point where we can solve for things, but before we do that, we actually have to view it as what? Yeah, view it as a single beam, right? So take the whole thing and solve for the reactions at A and at D, all right? So let's do that. Let's pretend this is just a solid object, and so we're going to solve for the reactions at A and D. So I'd say the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be 0. And it looks like my reactions, if I did my free body diagram, I'm going to say I'll have A, Y... A, X, and then I'll have some DY, right? Because it's a roller. So some of the forces in the X direction is going to give me uh, 1 million pounds uh, plus AX equals 0, right? What's AX? Yeah, AX is negative 1 million pounds. Okay. So then we can sum the forces in the y direction and set them equal to 0. 
and I'll have ay plus dy equals zero. So then let's sum the moments. Where we, do you think a good spot to sum the moments around might be? Excuse me? A. a, yeah, sure. So if we sum the moments about A, set it equal to zero. Oh, we're going to need some dimensions here. Let's make this, um, oh, let's be boring and say it's four. Let's make this, what do you think I should make this then? Three, right? Okay. Um, so the moment's about A, and we counterclockwise is positive. So summing about A, it looks like I'll have dy times 4, right? What else would I have causing a moment? Million. One million pounds. Positive or negative? negative. Yeah, negative. One million pounds three. times 3. And that has to equal zero. Right? So it looks to me like dy, uh, let's see, is going to be equal to 750,000 pounds, right? Three fourths of a million. No. It's three fourths of a million. That'd be three million divided by four. Which is three fourths of a million. Okay. Um, so if dy is seven fifty, then ay, therefore, has to be negative seven hundred and fifty. Okay. So now I can <coughs> come back here, and I'm going to say, okay, dy. Let's replace that. Instead of it being an unknown, we now know that it's 750 kip. And we know that uh, AY is 750 kip down. And we know that AX is uh, a million or a thousand kip to the right. Okay, so the first step in method of joints is always to solve for the reaction forces. By your faces, I see some people need to digest this for a minute, see if they agree or not, or see how I got there. People feel all right with this? Yeah, Max. Yeah, it's a thousand kip. Yep, AX is a thousand kip. Okay, so now we need to pick a joint where we can solve things at. So, uh, what do we know about B? How many unknowns would we have at B? Three. Three. How many unknowns would we have at D? Three. How many unknowns do we have at A? So let's start at A, okay? So I'm going to do A. I'll draw my free body diagram of A, which will have 750 kip down, 1,000 kip horizontal. I draw everything in tension until I know otherwise, right? So I'll have uh, FAD, if we want to call it that, and then I'll have FAB, right? Can anyone, by inspection, tell me what those are going to be? What are they going to be by inspection, Michael? Uh, FAB should be negative 750 kip. Should it be negative? What do you think? You saw a negative. All right. So, if it, if we the, if we draw it this way though, right? It has to be in the direction we drew it. So it actually FAB is just 750 kip. 
I understand what your mind is saying is it's the opposite of this 750, right? But here we're saying we've drawn the arrow in the direction, so we know it has to be in that direction in 750, so we'd say it's positive 750, the way that it's drawn. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, because we drew it in tension, right? Yeah, so it's not in compression, it's in tension because we drew it up. Uh, who wants to go out on a limb and do FAD? Yeah, it's going to be 1,000 kip. All right? Everyone see why I can do this by inspection? Because there's only two things acting in the Y direction, 750 kip and FAB. And FAB is drawn going the opposite direction. Therefore, it has to be 750 kip to counteract the 750 kip down. Right? And same thing in the horizontal. We have 1,000 going in what I would call negative X. And then we have FAD going in positive X, so it must be 1,000. Okay? All right. So, which joint do you want to go to next? B? I heard B. So let's go to joint B. So at joint B, it looks like we have uh, the 1 million kip, and it's pushing this way. Excuse me, 1,000 kip, million pounds. We just figured out that FAB is in tension in 750. So if it's in tension, okay. would it be pushing or pulling on B? If AB is in tension, would it be pushing or pulling on B? Pulling, right? Remember, you're stuck between there, and it's stretching you apart. What would B feel like you're doing to it? Pulling it, right? Okay. So B is you're pulling with uh, 750 kip. The other way you can do this is you say, well, if this was A and this is B, and I drew the arrow at A as going up, I drew it equal and opposite at B, the other place that it connects. Okay, So it's equal and opposite going down. All right. So then what are the unknowns that remain? It looks like I have uh, FBD. Drops away. Sorry, thank you. I have FBD heading down into the right, and I have FBC going horizontal. Right? Okay. What can you tell me right now looking at joint B? about the uh, sign of FBC or FBD? One of them at least has to be negative, right? Because we can see that everything is drawn to the right currently. And so that means this thing would be accelerating to the right unless one of these two forces has a negative sign. Okay? All right, so let's do our two equations. Sum the forces in the X. Set them equal to zero. I always choose right as positive. So it looks like I have a thousand kip plus, uh, let's see, the horizontal component of FBD, which is going to be four fifths FBD, right? And that's because it's a three, four, five triangle. Three, four, five. So the horizontal piece is four over five. Four fifths FBD plus FBC equals zero. Now, even though I know that one of these is negative, do I put a negative sign in here? No. no. I use the way that the arrow is drawn to indicate whether it's positive or negative, right? This is, I think, really hard for you smart people because you want to say, well, I know that's negative, so I'm going to throw a negative sign in here. Don't do it, right? Dumbly apply the rule. Say, I drew the arrow that way, and therefore it's positive. Right? Okay? Can't solve it yet, so let's sum the forces in the Y. So it looks like I have negative 750 kip. It's negative, not because it's in tension or compression, but because my sign convention says that up is positive, and it'd be pointing down with a magnitude of 750. So that makes it a negative 750 minus three-fifths FBD. 
and that has to equal zero. Okay. So we can solve this, and FBD I think is going to come out as negative a thousand. Does it? No, not negative a thousand. I'm sorry, negative twelve fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Got ahead of myself. Negative twelve fifty kip. And if I take negative twelve fifty kip and put it back up in here, I solve for FBC, and I find that FBC is zero. Zero kip. All right. So we just figured out right here that we've got 750 going down. We have 1250 that since it was negative, what's that tell us about it? Compression or tension? Compression. That only works if we always draw it in tension, right? That the sign tells us compression or tension. So we could say it's a thousand in compression. So that means this guy is pushing back, excuse me, 1250 with 1250 kip. Okay. And we found that FBC is zero. Okay. Now let's look at joint C here. If I summed the forces, so let's I'm going to draw a joint C where we can see it. It's a lot of C's. Okay. Here's joint C. And it's going to have FCD in tension down and F CB to the left, horizontal. Yeah, Victoria. Um, so with the negative 1250, are we always the negative sign around this yet? Or is it just negative because it's further down? So the reason it was negative 1250 is because when I, when I uh, solve this equation right here, right, mm -hmm. the, the bottom, some of the forces in the y, I get that FBD is negative 1250, right? Mm -hmm. And so what that's telling me is that in this drawing, I drew the arrow backwards, which is totally fine, because my rule is you always draw it in tension. So you did it correctly, and you got a negative answer, which says, well, the reality is that we have a force of negative 1250 pounds in this direction. No, because so, <clears throat> so we now know it's in compression, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that this member is going to be pushing on B instead of pulling on B. We drew it as if it was pulling on B, but now it's pushing on it. So we don't have to do anything with this drawing because we've already used it to solve, and we got that this is 1,250 kip in compression. Now if I move down to joint D, Right, so let's do that. Let's do the free body diagram of joint D. At joint D, I have the 750... Am I? Dang it. I have the 750 kip acting up, right? Hey, this will help us. I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay. So I have the 750 kip acting up. Um, I'll have... Uh, FAD, which we solved for earlier as being a thousand kip in tension, so it's a thousand kip that way. And then I'll have, going back to my drawing, I'll have some unknown FDC going up in tension. And now is where I need to worry about the, that negative sign. So now I'm going to do FBD, right? Mm -hmm. But we know that it's in compression. And since it's a known 1250 in compression, I know compressive forces push on the joint. Push on the joint, and I would say that's 1250. Okay. But it'd be positive 1250 in that direction. Okay? You could draw in tension and keep it negative. If that works for you, that's fine. But um, as long as you understand where it's going there. Okay? Yeah, and I suppose, Victoria, it probably actually makes more sense to carry that negative around, and then you can just draw everything blindly in tension. You just have to remember. The problem with that is that if we drew it this way, right, and put a negative sign on it, 
And then we do our sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and I say to the right is positive. It'd be really hard for me to remember that this is negative, negative 1250, right? Okay, <laughs> that's good for you. It's bad for me, okay? Because I don't, I don't do that as well, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> back to uh, joint C. If we draw our free body diagram of this joint, would you agree with me that this is what it would look like? Two forces, both in tension, one horizontal and one vertical. So if we sum our forces in the x direction, and it has to equal zero, what's that tell us about FCB? It equals zero. And if we sum our forces in the y direction, and that has to equal zero, what does that tell us about FCB? Also equals zero. Okay. Are those just inefficient bars for the... Yeah, so are those inefficient bars? Well... No, because maybe someday I'm going to pull on it over here. Yeah, but for right? the given load. For the given load, they don't do anything. Yeah, they could just not be there. They just look pretty. Okay? So this is, this is one case of what we call a zero force member. And let's make a rule for it. Okay? Case one is any joint with two members that are not collinear. and where no loads are applied uh, I'm going to say I'm going to add a word at the beginning in in any joint with two members that are not collinear and where no loads are applied both members are zero force members. Okay. Any joint with two members that are not collinear, meaning they're not in a line, and where no loads are applied, we know then that both those members are zero force members. Okay. So let me, let's play a little Point and pick. It's different than pick and flick. I have two boys in grade school. Can you tell? Okay. Pick and flick. All right. So, in six twenty one here. Can you identify some two for or some zero force members? Where is there a joint that only has two members that are not collinear that are not collinear and that no load is applied? Joint D, right? So D E and D C zero force members. Okay? How about 6-2? Any zero force members there? Mm. Ah, okay. So Michael suggests BD. Good, good suggestion, okay? Because it, it doesn't, there's no force applied there, but what would happen at B? It's a connection point, so it's going to have a reaction, right? 
So BD is not actually one, but you're right. When you look at it and just say, there's two members with no load applied, but there is a load applied because of the joint at B, okay? Are there any zero force members here? There aren't. Yeah, Sean? Why wouldn't the forces at C and D? Well, it's because at B, there actually would be a force applied here, right? There'd be BY and BX because of the pin joint. And so it's not like where there's no force applied. If P1 were gone and there'd be no force at C, then we could say that this is a zero, these two are zero force members. Okay. Oh, it does. We're saying that you can't call them zero force members. Yep. Yep. Okay, so how about 6 5? Any zero force members there? Yeah, joint C, right? It's a joint that has two members in it that are not collinear and no loads applied. Okay. How about this one? 6 2. Any zero force members? No zero force members. Okay? All right. Now, so we have one of our rules. Let's do another one, another problem to get a second rule. I'm going to save our rule sheet for later. Okay? It's going to look similar to the problem we just did, but can be just the same but different. Don't you like that? Trying to think what this, this is in a straight line, and I want this to be a right triangle, right, or, yeah, right there. So then, um, let's see, 5 times 4 fifths would be 20. Oh gosh, if I want it to be a similar triangle, I've got two triangles, 3, 4, Five, and I want the similar triangle to be 4xy, xy, right? Then 5 fourths must be equal to 4xths. So 5x equals 16, 
x is equal to 16 fifths, which is 3 point uh, 2, okay, 3.2, which would make this 1.8, okay? Everybody good with this? Okay, so what's the first thing we do in method of joints? Yeah, treat it as a solid object and solve for the reactions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the reactions at A and the reaction at B. Okay, so we can say then, I'll do those up here, I guess. Some of the forces in the x direction has to be equal zero to the right is positive. Looks we have, like we have minus 1,000. And at A, I'm going to say that we'll have AX and AY. So it looks like I've got minus 1,000 plus AX equals zero. So AX is 1,000 pounds. Okay, some of the forces in Y equals zero. Uh, looks like I'll have AY plus BY equals zero because there's some BY right there. So we sum the moments, let's sum them about A, set it equal to zero counterclockwise. So it looks like I'll have BY times 4 plus 1,000 times 3 equals 0. So BY is 750, but it's got to be negative, right? Negative 750. So then AY is positive 750. Uh, no, because at A, I put my finger on it, and the arrow is going to the left, so I end up going counterclockwise. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Everybody got that? All right. So, um, where do you guys want to start? If we started today, how many unknowns do we have? Three, right? So I'd say we could either start at B or at D. You want to do D? I he I'm hearing lots of D's, so let's do D. For A and D. For A and D, that's right. Okay. So at D, what would my free body diagram look like? I've got a dot so far. I have 1,000 going to the left, says Sierra. What else do I have? Yeah, an arrow going down from DA that we'll call FDA. What else will I have? FDC. FDC. Right? Okay, let's solve these. Some of the forces in the X equals zero. I know you might be doing this and being like, I'm really glad I didn't do any homework because this is really easy. I'm giving you really easy ones because we're not learning method of joints. I'm teaching you something else. So please go back and do method of joints because since you fessed up that you didn't do method of joints homework, I'm going to test you on it because I'm that cool. Some of the forces in the X. Looks like I'll have minus 1,000 plus hmm, FDC. 
we want the horizontal piece of it, so I think it's four fifths FDC equals zero. Okay. And then some of the forces in the Y equals zero. Let's go straight up. Looks like I'll have negative FDA minus three fifths FDC equals zero. So let's see, FDC it looks like is that 1250? And I think FDA, FDA ends up being uh, negative 750. All right, what's the negative tell us? It's in compression, okay? So now we could go down to A but that's not the point I'm trying to make. Let's go to C. What's our free body diagram at C look like? CD, is that what you said? Which we just found in the problem above, right? And it was tension. So it's pulling up and to the left. 1250, and then we're going to have FCB in line with that, and then we're going to have FCA going off in this direction, okay? Now, I'm going to do, some, I'm going to do a trick. Ready? Mm -hmm. Watch. Okay. Now, if we look at it like that, what does FCB have to be? That's got to be 1250, right? What does FCA have to be? Zero. zero. Why does FCA have to be zero? There's nothing opposing it. There's no opposing force against it. So FCA is zero. And this brings us to our second rule for zero force members. When you have a joint that has three... Uh, Thingy, <laughs> three members, there we go. A joint with three members, two of which are collinear, and there are no forces applied at the joint, the third member is a zero force member. Okay, so in this case, I've got a joint with three members, no forces applied, two of them are collinear, the 1250 and the FCB, therefore FCA has to be a zero force member. Okay, so let's do that. Let's... Here's second zero force member rule is in a joint with three members, two of which are collinear. where no forces are applied. Then the uh, third member, and by third I mean the non-collinear one, must be a zero force member. doesn't matter the angle at all, right? Good question. So Brendan says it doesn't matter the angle. Exactly. So this guy could be coming straight down this way, right? And it wouldn't matter because we still have a joint with three members, two that are collinear, so the third has to be a zero force member, okay? So why is member AC in there? Why don't we just delete it all together? Well, maybe it's there for stability. 
right? Imagine if that thousand pound load was removed, what would happen to this guy? If an ant farted on it at D, it might fall over, right? It could collapse because it's got this pin joint here that we say is a smooth pin, so it could buckle, this could just go like that, and the whole thing would fall over, okay? Everybody got the two cases for zero force members? Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at a few. Um, problem 6-6 six, six here. Is there anything that counts as a, that we know immediately as a zero force member? D. Anything, once we know that D has a zero force member in it, does that help us anywhere else? B, right? So D we know two members that are collinear in a three member joint, no force is applied, therefore DB has to be a zero force member. Agreed? Okay, so if that's true, and then I come down and I look at joint B, DB is gone, so really we just have a three member joint where BE now is not collinear with them, so it's a zero force member. Yeah, Brendan. Uh huh. So what are we really doing So we're neglecting. So we're looking at what the actual structural, uh, what the design load would be. And most of the time, these things are designed to carry loads far in excess, like orders of magnitude more than their own individual weight. And so you can neglect it. But you are indeed correct that yeah, you you wouldn't build this without that. Okay. How about over here? Right? CA is a zero force member. BD, zero force member. Okay. What if there's a force applied at B that's going straight down on the last one? Uh, still a zero force member if you look at joint B. That's a great question. So Brendan says, what if there was a force applied at B going straight down? Would that change things? And the answer is no, it wouldn't because we're looking at B. And at B, you would still have two collinear members, one not collinear, no force applied, therefore that is zero. Right? So that means that A, D, A, and D, C would carry all of that downward weight. Cool, huh? So let's look at 6, 7 here. Okay. Joint F. Any zero force members there? How many joint how many members are there? Well, I just want you to look at joint F first. At joint F, can you immediately tell that anything is a zero force member? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? No two members are collinear. Because there's three members, which starts us to think maybe, but no two of them are collinear with each other. So we reject that one. If we go to joint C, however, at joint C we can say, hmm, can we say anything? There's four of them. Right, so this is not a three-member joint, so we, we don't actually know anything about that one. Right? Okay? All right. Everybody understand zero force members? Why they save you some work sometimes? Okay? You can brute force it if you don't want to do it that way, but that is brute forcing it. Okay, so let's move on to method of sections. Have half an hour left. We started our conversation with a sweet bridge.
And I think we started by saying there was a load of 20 kip here and a load of 5 kip up here. This is what we started with on Wednesday, right? And I think we said that uh, the, this, these spans were 6 and the height of this was 4 and I was really, really proud of myself, right? Because that makes these three, four, five triangles. This took me a decade to be able to do that. Okay. Now, lots of times, maybe rather than saying uh, I want to know everyone, maybe I just want to know what's going on in DE right here. Right? So maybe what I'm interested in doing is finding. F, D, E, okay? You have the tools to do this. You could do this method of joints, right? So to do method of joints, what's the first thing you do? You look at it as a whole and solve for the reactions, okay? So we would do that by, let's say, sum the moments about A, right? and they're going to be 0, and it looks like I'll have minus 20 times 6, um, minus 5 times 6, 12, uh, 15, plus FG, or sorry, I'll say GY, uh, times 18 equals 0. Right? So I'm just summing the moments, saying that there's some GY right here. So we can solve for GY. Hundred and twenty plus seventy-five, hundred and ninety-five divided by eighteen. It's gonna be like ten point eight. Okay, so ten point eight kip. Then if I add them together, I have 25, so that means that AY would be 25 minus 10.8, or 14.2 kip. Okay, so I'm starting to skip some force summations. Looks like that made some of you angry. All right, so all I'm doing here, I did sum the moments about A, and then I sum the forces in the Y direction, and they have to be zero, so I'm going to have a sub y plus g sub y uh, minus 25 equals 0. So I know g sub y is 10.8. So I take 25 to the other side, subtract 10.8, and I get 14.2 for a y. Okay. So we know 14.2 and 10.8. And now I could dive into method of joints. Right? I could dive in and I could say, all right, I'm going to start here at G. I know 10.8 up. I know there's DF, DGF and DGE, two things, and I could solve that. There would be two equations to solve. And then that would get me over to E where I would have uh, three unknowns, so I couldn't go there, so I'd have to go up to F, solve two more equations. That would be four. And then from F, I could go down to E, solve two more equations. That would be six equations to get my answer. Does everyone kind of follow that method of joints? You'd have to bounce all the way through each joint doing two equations. An alternative is this whole thing is in static equilibrium, right? Meaning it's not moving. So I can cut it, and it should stay in static equilibrium as long as I account for the forces that are internal to the members that I cut. All right? So what I do when I cut it, I'm going to cut through one, two, three members because I'm going to be able to write three equations of equilibrium because now I'm just not, I'm not at a particle, right? The method of joints is just particle equilibrium. We're treating the joint as a particle. All the forces are collinear, so you get some of the forces in the X and the Y. Method of sections is a rigid body, and now I have to do some of the forces in the X and the Y and some of the moments about a point. 
So now let's draw our cut section. So I'm gonna, just going to draw it right below it. Oof, my triangles are getting uglier as the day goes on. Okay. I put my forces that I know on it. 10.8. Draw my unknown forces in tension because that's my rule. I'll have FCE. I'll have FED and FFD, right? Now I have three unknowns, but I can write three equations. I can say the sum of the forces in the X is zero. To the right is positive. Looks like I'll have negative FCE minus FCD minus, I'm going to go with 3 fifths FED equals zero. Oh, yes. Holy cow, yes. I forgot to throw my 5-kip on there. Very common mistake. Good eye. Right, so 5-kip was in my original load diagram, so I need to make sure I include it here. Right? Thank you, Nick. Whew, this could have gotten ugly. Okay. Make sure you put all your loads on it. Fortunately, it doesn't change some of the forces in the X. Yes, yeah, Sierra. It would be FFD, not FCD. Yeah, where'd they come up with that? Gosh, it's not FCD, it's FFD. <laughs> Don't know why I threw a C in there. Probably because I had CE here. Okay, how about some of the forces in the X? Walk me through it. Why? Walk me through my way to Friday. Whew. Some of the forces in the Y. What do we have? Huh? 10.8 is going to be positive, right? Because it's going up. So 10.8 up. Minus 5. FCD have anything? Nope. FED? Yep. Plus 4 fifths. FED equals zero. So we can solve for FED now, right? FED It's going to be just barely over four, four point two. Negative 4.2? By the way, when I throw out numbers like that, I'm doing them in my head, so it's highly likely I get them wrong. Negative 7.25? Great. See? I just assume I did it wrong. Like no, you can't. Don't assume you did it wrong. Assume I did it wrong. I'm doing them in my head. So you're right all the way Yeah, well, you know, 10.8 minus 5. Be 5.8, right? So 5.8 times 5 divided by 4. Yeah, that's going to be bigger than 5. Sorry, I did it wrong. Okay, 7.25. What's the negative mean? It's in compression. Okay. So how many equations did we have to do to solve this? Two. If you did method of joints, you would have had to do six. Okay. It is magical. So the only trick to doing the method of sections is not the only. There's several tricks. You have to still solve for the reaction forces. Okay. So both method of sections and method of joints start by solving for the reaction forces. 
Second, you have to cut through only three members. Elsewise, you're going to have too many unknowns. Okay? Third, you have to make sure that you put whatever loads were on the problem to start with, put them back on. So I almost forgot to include this five kit, right? You have to make sure you put them back in there. All right? We have slightly different answers compared to this semester. We got seven negative seven point three. Yeah. It's going to be kind of tricky. Is that uh, in general? Or it was specific? rounding. It would be dead on if we carried our numbers all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Vlad. So F E D and F G E are the same. Yes. Yep. Okay. Questions? All right, we have some time, so let's take a look at our note packet. I think I brought mine today. Okay. Okay, so let's flex our uh, method of sections muscles. I'd like you to find Get that it's zero. How'd we? How'd you end up with zero, Brendan? Because I know FDB is zero. Okay, and how did you know FDB was zero? Because the, it's the second row. Joint D, right? Yeah, joint D. Joint D. There's two collinear members and then one non-collinear. Yeah. No load applied. DB oh. is zero. So then the same rule applied at B yeah. tells you that BE is going to be zero. Exactly. Do you think member DE is in compression or in tension by looking at it? DE. -E. -E. Compression, right? So is there a reason to have stick DB in there? You bet, right? Because again, if this got it all out of line for any reason, the wind blows on it, an ant crawls on it, any reason, it would collapse. Right? It's not stable unless you have member DB. So just because a zero force member is a zero force member does not mean you can just take it out. Does mean you can take it out of your analysis, but does not mean you can just take it out of the structure. Okay? All right. Let's go to this one. It'll be more interesting. How about FDC? I want you to find FDC. You can do method of joints or method of sections. It is up to you. DC. Okay? I'm going to give you a while to do that. All right. So first step, always solve for the reactions. EY, FY. Fx, right? That is a roller, yeah. It does not have an X component. Nope. So let's sum our forces in the X direction. Yeah. No, it's got little wheels underneath it. It's like a roller skate. Yeah. Um. So some of the forces in the X, we've got 130 pounds and we need 5 thirteenths of it, which I'm pretty sure e equals negative 50 pounds. And then we'll have plus F sub X 
equals 0. So I'm going to say f sub x equals 50. Sum the forces in the y, set that equal to 0. Looks like I'm going to have negative 120 plus ey plus fy equals 0. So we need to do one more. Sum the moments. Where do you want to sum the moments about? Hey! Yeah, man. Get rid of that thing. Sum the moments about A. And I'll have EY times 6 plus FY times 9 equals 0. So now I can solve uh, one, two equations, right? And what do you get for Fy and Ey? So I hear a negative 240 and a 360. Is that right? Is that what you said? I hope so. That's what you said, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is what I said. Yeah. But I did my moments differently. Ah. Did anyone else get these numbers? I got 480 for FY. You got 360 for EY? I got 360 for EY. Uh, yeah, I also got 360. Yeah, so I think FY is negative 240. Yep. Okay. So now that we have these, I think I asked for force DC, right? So I can go ahead and slice it right there. And I'll end up with something that looks... like this, with uh, Fy being down 240, Ey being up 360, and Fx being 50 that way. And then I'll have FBD, FDC, FCE. <laughs> On this? I don't. It's gone. Yep, I'm only looking at the, the piece. So the question was, how do you work in the load that's applied at A? And the answer is you don't because it's, I slice it here and I just look at the pieces that I'm interested in. I also could slice it here and look at this side and then I wouldn't have to count for EY, FX, FY. I'd only account for the 130 there. Either pro way would be fine. I happen to choose this way, though. Okay. So now we can say, well, let's sum the forces in the x. They've got to be 0. Looks like I've got 50 minus FBD minus FCE uh, minus 3 fifths FDC equals 0. And sum the forces in the y. Oh, I think I've almost run this pin out of ink. It's impressive that I kept it that long. Looks like I'll just have minus 4 fifths FDC plus 360 minus 240 equals 0. That's all you need. FDC is equal to uh, 5 fourths times 120. Is that 150? Yeah. So if we did the other side of this, uh -huh. the 130 times 4th, yep. we wouldn't need to, we could skip that first step currently. 
Ah, excellent question. So Brendan says, if we cut it here and looked at the left-hand section, we could actually skip this first part where we found the reactions because none of the reactions would be in our problem. Everybody see that? That's a really good point, right? We could have solved this by just cutting it and applying the loads, and we would have solved it in two steps, two equations, right? I'm going to encourage you, though, to always solve for the reactions first, okay? If you, if you can see that and do it, great, but I'm afraid I'd rather have you do the extra work when you don't need it to do this than not do this every time and cut it here and try and solve it and not have account for all the loads. Okay? Isn't there four unknowns if you do that though? Whether no. If you cut it right here, yeah. you'd have the unknown one, two, and three. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Magical. All right. Method of sections, it's the stuff. It's pretty neat. Okay? It relies on everything being in static equilibrium. So I'm going to really encourage you to make this weekend trust weekend, right? Spend some big time doing joints and sections, okay? Do you trust right. we'll fit